Alhamdulillah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has allowed us to complete this amazing month of Ramadan, that 29 to 30 days of fasting for the sake of Allah, of standing hopefully in prayer in some portion of the night prayer for the sake of Allah. And the one who did this, inshallah, for all of us, and did it with sincerity as the Prophet ﷺ tells us, that the one who fasts, man sama Ramadan, iman and rahtisab, the one who fasts Ramadan with faith and with a expectation of the reward will emerge from the month forgiven, will be forgiven for their past sins. And so the believers, alhamdulillah, the one of the reasons why we celebrate this day of Eid is to be grateful to Allah for the forgiveness that we've achieved in this noble month of Ramadan and for the purity that we've achieved in this noble month of Ramadan. And when this forgiveness is achieved, when this purity is achieved, what happens? A light comes in the heart of the believers. The believers always have a light, but this light increases and it becomes stronger and stronger and stronger. And you and I, we become more and more purified. The light becomes more perfected in this month of Ramadan. And then you emerge from this month completely cleansed and pure. As Allah Ta'ala, He says in the Quran that, Oh, you who believe that have fear of Allah, taqwa of Allah, and believe in His Messenger, and He will bestow upon you a double portion of His mercy, and He will provide for you a light, a nur, by which you shall walk, and by which you shall navigate, and He will forgive you for the past of what you've done wrong. It is an amazing religion that we have, that we make a mistake, and all we have to do is ask Allah, and be sincere with that, and not only does He forgive us for that mistake, but in fact, He converts that mistake, the sin that we did, as, as I mentioned in Ayat Surah Furqan, that when somebody repents sincerely to Allah, Allah changes, and they do good deeds, Allah changes their bad deeds into good deeds. How amazing is a religion that somebody could have been caught up in the worst of sins, and they repented sincerely, and all of those sins that we had accumulated actually get transformed into good deeds and into lights, which now help you on your path to Allah. This is the religion, alhamdulillah, that we have. And so when this light has emerged, this purity has emerged in the hearts of the believers, there's also somebody who is back out. This creation that's back out, that's trying to come and grab that light and fill our hearts instead of with nur, to fill it with darkness. And that is the shayateen. And so we have to be on guard in the first day of Shawwal and this noble day of Eid al-Fitr against the shayateen. And while we all are very grateful to our Lord for the blessings that we are experiencing, and while Eid is a happy occasion, and alhamdulillah that we've reached this occasion of, this occasion of Eid, our hearts are also heavy as an ummah. That our hearts are also feeling extremely heavy with the atrocities that we are seeing against our brothers and sisters that have been perpetrated now for over years and decades, but most notably in the last six months, the intensity of the atrocities that have taken place against our brothers and sisters in Gaza. We ask and we pray that Allah give them relief, and that Allah give them faraj, and that Allah give them an opening, and that Allah Ta'ala protect them and shower His looks upon them. And just like there are the shayateen of jinn, the normal shayateen you and I think of, there's also the shayateen of ints, the shayateen of human beings, the human shayateen, the human devils, that they weren't locked up in Ramadan, as we can see. That the devils of Zionism, they weren't locked up. They continue to perpetrate their evil on this earth and their spread corruption on this earth, even while the believers were trying to hold fast to their Lord and hold fast to the rope of their Lord and to that hold fast to taqwa. And so while our hearts are very, very heavy, we also look to see what role model and what example have our brothers and sisters in Philistine set for us. That they are exemplifying the highest levels of this light that we are talking about. The highest levels of Iman, the most highest levels of the station of certainty are being exemplified by our brothers and sisters in Gaza. And in in Philistine and, and in many other parts of the Muslim world, in Sudan and other parts that are struggling with immense tribulation. And what are they doing that amidst the tribulation, they have patience with their Lord. Amidst the difficulty, they have tawakkul of their Lord, trust in Allah, reliance in Allah. They are showing us and they are showing humanity what Islam and proper belief in Allah can unlock for you. And that's why I'm sure many of you have been seeing the videos online that you have people entering Islam and mass in droves in the last few months because they're seeing the the taqwa, the belief of the people, of our brothers and sisters in Palestine. And they're saying, what is this? What is this amazing religion that gives you this much hope 
and this much to hold on to even amidst the worst possible human atrocities. And this is this religion of Islam. And so we have to ask ourselves, our brothers and sisters, while we are sitting here, alhamdulillah, that basking and swimming in the blessings of our Lord, and we have so much that's filled with blessings, filled with food, filled with clothing, filled with shelter, with all sorts of wealth, that all of these blessings, but what is our responsibility when it comes to serving the Ummah of the Prophet ﷺ? Because there are people who, that are brothers and sisters in many parts of the Muslim world, as they continue to struggle, they hold firm to their faith. They struggle with themselves. They struggle in the path of Allah for the sake of this deen. And we have to ask ourselves on this day when we've emerged pure, inshallah, from the month of Ramadan. The biggest thing that the shaitan wants you to do, the shaitan wants to get to right now is to try and limit our human potential because he knows the potential of the human being. He was jealous of Adam alayhi salam and he knew the Adamic potential that Adam alayhi salam had and so he was envious and arrogant and he was jealous and then he was cursed because of that. So he's waiting to try and mess that potential up because each and every single one of you here, every single one of us here has a special purpose for why Allah put you on this planet. It's not just to go through the motion of the day-to-day -day lives, go to work, come home, watch Netflix, socialize, so on and so forth. That's not, that's the Western, that structure, the way that, that people who are unsure of what their purpose is, that's how they operate. The Muslim, they never operated like that throughout our history. We always understood our fundamental purpose on this planet. And we only created mankind and jinn to worship me or in order to know me. We, they understood that in the ummah throughout history, throughout centuries, understood that they have a, diff, a responsibility as a khalifa fil ard, as a vicegerent, as a representative of God on this planet to do good and to, and to stop corruption from happening. This is one of the main responsibilities of the believer and the shaitan. He knows that. And so he tries through gradual methods. If his ultimate goal is to get you and I to fall from this high potential that we have, which especially on this day of Eid is unlocked because of the nur that the believer contains after the month of Ramadan. What does he try to do? He tries to get you to gradually limit that potential. He works in phases, the shaitan, progressively, one small thing, one small thing, one small thing, until he completely messes us up, until he gets us to slip up, and we are now, we might end up in a worse state than we were in before the month of Ramadan because of the, the way in which the shayateen, they, they go after us. But this can all be that, that reversed if we understand our purpose. As Allah Ta'ala, he says in the Quran, that to say, قُلْ إِنَّ السَّلَاةِ وَنُسُكِ وَمَحْيَا وَمَحْيَا وَمَمَاتِ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالِمِينَ That say, my prayer, my sacrifice, my life, my death are all for Allah, the Lord of the world. This is the ultimate goal that the believer wants to get to. That it's whatever Allah has given me is for Him. Whatever I have is for Him. It doesn't mean you don't do things for your own dunya, but it's to use the talents that Allah has given you for His sake. It's like the wife of Imran, alayhi salam, as Allah mentioned in Surah Ali Imran, she, when she was pregnant, she said, I dedicate whatever is in my womb entirely to you. Entirely to you and to your service. And she was thinking that it was going to be a boy, and that the boy would serve in the temple as they usually would do at the time if you wanted to dedicate them to the service of the temple. But who was born then? It was Maryam alayhi salam. She was the one who was born to her. And she said, oh, Allah, it is, it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a girl, it's not a boy. Allah says, and Allah knew exactly who it was going to be. But what, what was that intention, the deep intention to dedicate what was in her to, for the sake of Allah resulted in one of the most pious women to ever walk the face of this earth, a Sayyidah Maryam. That alayhi salam, and then who came from her? Isa ibn Maryam. That this amazing woman who had many miracles happen on her hands, including this amazing birth of Isa alayhi salam, all because of this intention that was set of dedication, dedicating what I have for the sake of Allah. And as Sayyidina Umar bin al-Khattab radiallahu anhu, he said that verily we were a disgraceful people, and Allah then honored us with Islam. He ennobled us with Islam. And he said, if we seek as Muslims, honor in anything else from anything else besides that which Allah honored us, Allah will disgrace us. Because this ummah is supposed to seek its honor in the most noble of Allah's 
uh, creations and in the deen, in the deen. I mean, the law, Islam, that the, the way, in the way of Allah and the way in His sight is Islam. That's what we seek our elevation in. Not in our positions and in our titles at work and how much money we make and in how many homes we have, how many cars we have, how many vacation homes we have, and all of our investments and in our stocks and all of the different things that keep us caught up in the in the life of this dunya. Allah said that this, this the human being has this love of shahawat, of these desires, mainly relating to wealth and to the life of this dunya. But that's not the purpose. We can do those things, but what if we use those things then for the sake of our Lord? But shaitan, again, he is trying to get us to mess up. He is the chief deluder. As Allah says, Ya ayyuhal nas, inna wa'dullahi haq, fala tabrunnakum al hayat dunya wa la yabrunnakum billahi gurur. That, O oh, people, Allah's promise is true, so do not let the life of this world, this present life, delude you. And do not let the chief deluder deceive you. Shaitan, he's the chief deluder, the chief delusion officer. That's his name. That's his title. That's his goal. He's trying to get everybody to mess up their understanding and to slip up. And so do not let him mess you up. Because Allah has a goal of trying to get us out. Allah, who amanu, Allah is the protecting friend of the believers, taking them out of darknesses into light. That is what the belief Allah is doing for the believers and what inshallah was just done in Ramadan and we ask that Allah accepted from us. But there and there are those who disbelieve that those who disbelieve, their guardians are the evil ones. Allah Ta'ala says that those who are slipping up, their guardians are the evil ones. They bring them out of the light into all kinds of darknesses. And so what is the shaitan trying to do? He is trying to bring us out of this light into darknesses and he does it with gradual steps. What's the first thing that he goes after after the month of Ramadan is our prayer. The first thing that he goes after is the prayer. And perhaps we were consistent with our prayers in the month of Ramadan and we might have woken up this morning and maybe missed Fajr Salat. And people might prioritize the Eid Salat which is not a Fajr Salat over the Fajr Salat. This is how the shaitan works. He tries to delude us. He tries to get up to stay up late, to miss out, to forget what's important. Don't let shaitan take away the biggest, we still say there's nothing to eat, but all these blessings that we have, and we might miss the prayer. We might not prioritize the prayer. So focus on perfecting the prayer. If you are praying that in Jama'a, uh, regularly in Ramadan, don't lose that. If you are praying Taraweeh in Ramadan, try to pray Isha in the Masjid in Ramadan. If, that, if that's something that you can put an extra effort in, it will protect you. If you are praying your Sunnah prayers in Ramadan, then go through and do something extra outside of the month of Ramadan to try and protect yourself. But guard the prayer, especially on the day of Eid. So if, you're, if we're busy with socializing, sometimes we might forget that we got to pray. Use that time to pray in Jama'at and to also pray for your brothers and sisters who need our prayers right now. The second thing that the shayateen they go after is the tongue. The tongue to slip up as the shaytan. He says that I will surely sit in ambush lying in wait for them on the straight path. And one of the first things that he's going to try to do is get us to slip up with our tongue. How does he do that? Because now we're going to see people who we haven't seen in a long time. And we're going to have a chance to talk to them about other people who we haven't maybe seen in a long time. And this is where the qila wa qal, it starts. This person did this and said this. And the backbiting and the ghiba and the namima, it begins. Don't let shaitan take all of the deeds you just earned in Ramadan and transfer them to somebody because that's the punishment for backbiting. One of the punishments is when you talk ill about somebody behind their back, that you're giving them your good deeds. You don't even like that person, so why would we want to give our good deeds to that person? Let alone that all the other things that come, so we have to be on guard with what our tongue says in this day. And also be very careful on this day of argumentation and fighting and getting and letting things happen between yourself, your family, your spouses, your children. This is one of the main things that Shaitan that Shaitan they try to do is to get people to start fighting on the day of Eid because they're back out, they see they've been purified, and they say, no, let's cause problems between family members. Let's cause problems between spouses, problems between children and parents. Do not let the deluder delude you and let him slip let you slip up with the tongue and all of the other forms of the tongue, the sins of the tongue that we know of, we have to be on guard for that. And as the Prophet ﷺ, he says that the son of that the shaitan, he's lying in wait like like a like prey, like over the son of Adam, like a predator. And if the son of Adam remembers Allah, shaitan retreats. And if he forgets Allah, shaitan devours his heart. Look at the words that are used. They devour and lie in wait and 
the whisperer gets to that. So don't let this happen. Remember Allah, as soon as you're about to say something out of anger or out of uh, forgetfulness, we have to remember Allah. Say, Astaghfirullah, La ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar, whatever thinker it is, and the shayateen, they will, inshallah, retreat. The third way that the shayateen, they try to get to us on right after, during the day of Eid and right after, is by trying to go after our modesty. That modesty is one of the chief traits of the believers, haya, trying to be people of modesty, people of a type of shyness before their Lord. And what happens, Allah says in the Quran, O oh, children of Adam, do not let say, shaitan deceive you as he tempted your parents out of paradise and caused their cover, their clothing to be removed in order to expose their nakedness. That this is one of the main ways that shaitan will slowly try to go after a society is to try to get them to become more and more immodest in their dress in their appearance, in their actions. All forms of modesty are covered here. And this applies to men just as it, just as it does to women. That with regards to wearing tight, attractive clothing that men are doing, that men in this society are doing all sorts of strange things that never would have been imagined before. And this applies also to our sisters, that to try and guard the modesty, to try and be careful. We just worship Allah for an entire month. It is not on the day of Eid that we now start to do things that would appear immodest in the eyes of Allah because we want to celebrate the favors. It's why we do so many takbirat in this day of Eid to try to be grateful to our Lord. And the fourth way that the shayateen, they try and get to us, is our food intake. What was Ramadan all about? It was about restraining from food. It was about trying to stay away from eating things that are actually permissible. We stayed away, you know, it's 11 a.m., you can't just eat a banana because you're hungry. But today, you can eat a banana because it's Eid. You don't have to fast anymore. But a banana was always permissible. But in Ramadan, in a specific period of time, it becomes impermissible. But what the shaitan tries to do is, after he sees this amazing light that's emerged from the believers, he knows one of the fastest ways to ruin that light and to spread darkness is through food intake. How so? Through trying to get us to consume things that are not halal in the sight of Allah and try to get oh, that, that cover our hearts with darkness. As Allah Ta'ala, He says in the Quran that, Ya ayyuhan nas, eat from what is on this earth lawful and good. And that don't follow in the footsteps of shaitan. Directly linking the food that you and I eat to following the footsteps of shaitan or not following his footsteps. And in another ayah, He says, Do not eat upon that which the name of Allah has not been mentioned at the time of slaughter, for indeed it is a grave disobedience, a significant disobedience, and then he says that the shayateen, they will incite their followers to try to argue with you, to make you do this. And so if you're craving something, Chick-fil-A, in and out whatever these things are, say, you know what, I just fasted in the month of Ramadan, from now on I'm just going to go for the vegetarian option. If you didn't eat the zabiha or halal, try and hold fast to that for as long as you can, because the shaitan, this is one of the fastest ways for him to try and get the, the light out of us and to try and get us to gradually work towards, dark, uh, towards darkness. And remember, it's a slow erosion. He doesn't go after everything and everybody at once. It happens a little by little, little by little. But his ultimate goal is to get you and I to forget about our chief human potential that we have. As Allah Ta'ala, he says, karamna bani Adam. And we ennoble Bani Adam. And he says about this, Ummah kuntum khayya ummatin ufdijat nas you were the best people ever sent forth to humanity. That's the ummah of the Prophet ﷺ. That's everybody here. That's what our brothers and sisters around the world are. That we are 1.5 some billion strong and we have so much potential in us but we can't let the shayateen take this potential away from us. Do not let them limit your light and try and spread darkness in your heart. Alhamdulillah. Allahu Akbar, 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 Kabira, Alhamdulillah, Kabira, was upon Allah, he will return to Asila. Alhamdulillah, Allahu Masaya, Allah, Sayyidina Muhammadin, Wala Ali, he was happy, Sayyidina Ali, Allah, 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 we are in times that the Prophet ﷺ foretold of, and he told us that the times are going to get more and more difficult. He mentions in one hadith that as these tribulations start happening, what will eventually take place is the entire world will split into two groups, two factions. That of the faction of Iman, 
and the group of iman and belief with no hypocrisy in it, and that of the people of hypocrisy and darkness with no belief in them. It becomes about light versus darkness, about good versus evil, and that is the exact direction that this world is headed towards today. We are seeing that in these tribulations that are occurring against the Muslims around the world, that you have people who very clearly are standing up for justice and for truth, and inshallah will be on the side of haq and the side of faith, and then you're seeing people of extreme hypocrisy, next levels of hypocrisy that you couldn't even think, imagine, that the, the policies that governments around the world are implementing in the situation going on in Palestine, in the genocide, these policies are filled with hypocrisy on their way very clearly towards being in this faction of darkness. But the question is to us as Mu'minun, as believers, is what are we going to do to preserve our Iman when these times they get more and more difficult? How are we going to act? That's what we said. If it's not this Ramadan, which Ramadan is it? If it's not today, when is it going to be that we finally say, you know what, I'm ready to change for the sake of Allah. I'm ready to give my life and to give my, my, my moments and to give whatever I can in terms of my talents and my abilities and portion of my wealth for the sake of my Lord. That that is the goal that we want to have and this is the time for us to unlock that goal so that the shayateen, they're seeing this power that the ummah has when it has so much light collectively. And they can't mess everybody up if everybody is holding fast onto their deen and trying to protect this light. But remember the potential that the greatness that Allah has put inside of us as people. Don't let the deceptions of the society we live in, the deceptions of the comfortable suburban lifestyle, which alhamdulillah is a great thing, but it also has challenges when it tries to make us think that this life is the only life. No, it's not. This life is about sacrifice. It's about working. It's about putting in effort. It's about dedicating our lives, a portion of our lives for the sake of Allah, so that we can achieve what is meant for us in the next life. So we have to ask ourselves, what is our responsibility as an ummah, as people here in the West sitting among so many blessings, what is our responsibility for Palestine? That at minimum, the first thing we should be doing regularly is making dua for them. Regularly making dua with tears flowing and weeping. While we are gathering, we have to think of them. Think about the children today, the child who woke up for Eid in Palestine, who didn't have his parents anymore to wish him Eid Mubarak because his parents had passed away in this brutal occupation, this brutal genocide. And the parents that who wanted to wish Eid Mubarak and give their child, their son, their daughter a hug, but they couldn't because their child, they had to bury them because of this genocide that's taking place. Think about the people who they don't have their spouses anymore to comfort them like we do in this day. They don't have their siblings anymore. This is what our brothers and sisters are going through. This is not a celebratory occasion for them because of the atrocities that have been taking place. So while we are in this state of sugar, we also have to keep our brothers and sisters in our dua and let the sacrifices that they made move us to become better people for the sake of Allah and for the sake of this Ummah. That this is the time for us to finally change if we never changed before. The next thing we can do for them is we should make an intention to look after the orphans. That there are many orphans that have emerged in Palestine, that are in Syria, that are in Afghanistan, that are all over the Muslim world, in many, many, many countries. That it's one of us can make the intention that, Ya Allah, when it's possible, I want to adopt an orphan. I want to take care of an orphan. I want to bring somebody in. Alhamdulillah, people living comfortably, big homes, a lot of space, very, very easy lifestyles, which can help undo the trauma that these people, that they have been through. The Prophet Sallallahu said that I and the guardian of an orphan will be in the Jannah like this, holding his hand, his finger together. Literally will be next to them because your, power, your Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he was an orphan. He was an orphan. And he commanded us to try and take care of the orphans. And so make that intention that, Ya Allah, I'll put a little bit of extra effort and some sacrifice to take care of somebody who doesn't have their parents anymore. I want to be that love that they don't have anymore. I want to provide that love and that protection for them. And then there's also so many efforts that we can do. If you are blessed with wealth, that spread that, spread that wealth serving people, feeding people, starting soup kitchens, whether it's in this society or all over the Muslim world, that we have a responsibility in our religion to feed those who are hungry. And when we are sitting with so much food, people will go to eat lunches and brunches and there'll be 10, 15, 20 options to eat from. And there are so many people around the world that haven't eaten for the weeks, that there was fatawa coming out and people were asking people in Palestine, we heard this through somebody else, that questions literally, that is our fast valid if we didn't eat anything for suhoor, but we fasted and we don't have anything for iftar? 
but we fasted? Is the is the is the is the siyam, Is it still valid? That this is the hunger that's being perpetrated against our brothers and sisters. So then, what about when we have blessing, unity, and mass is engaged in goodness? Goodness will emerge throughout the world from the Muslims, as we've seen the examples that there was once in the United States of America somebody who was an orphan. He was orphaned when he was young, and he was caught up in the streets, and he was caught up in drugs, and he was caught up with that uh, that all sorts of haram prostitution and all sorts of other things and he was literally a gangster and then he got thrown into prison and after amassing lots and lots of wrong in his life he got thrown into prison and then in that prison he transformed that this orphan who had been abandoned filled with trauma in his life filled with difficult life on the streets Allah transformed him in this prison and he became one of the greatest American Muslims that we know of today as Malcolm X. That whatever lives we have lived in the past, it doesn't matter if we sincerely turn to Allah. Some of the best people who do the greatest work for the sake of Allah were steeped in so much haram and wrong before. Don't let that stop you because remember the one who repents sincerely to Allah. Allah will transform the bad that they've done into good. So that intention becomes very, very clear. And if we do that, if we dedicate ourselves to our Lord and we make that niyyah, know the reward that is waiting for you. That those who believe and they migrated for the sake of Allah and they're striving in the cause of Allah with their selves, with their persons and their property, meaning we're putting our dedication out there, we're putting in effort and we're sacrificing with them is the highest rank in the sight of Allah and the greatest of triumphs. That's what we want as an ummah. We want that for ourselves. We want that for the ummah globally. We want that for our brothers and sisters in Palestine. In Allah, O Malaikatu, Yusallam ala Nabi, Ya Ali, Wa Ladi Amr, Sallu Alayhi Wa Sallam, Wa Sallam, Wa Sallam, Wa Sallam, Wa Sallam, Wa Barak Ala Sayyidina Muhammadin Wa Ala Alihi Wa Sallam, Wa Sallam, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Allah, Ya Allah, we ask Ya Allah that you bestow farad and relief upon our brothers and sisters in Gaza, that you bestow your mercy and your looks upon them, Ya Allah, that you give them relief, Ya Allah, that you give us the ability to do whatever it is that we can do for this Ummah, Ya Allah, and to serve you. We ask that you reform our hearts, that you protect this light, and that you protect us from the whisperings of shaitan, and that you know change us in the best of ways and use us in your work and in your service. We ask you for everything good, the public is our master, and we ask you for protection from everything evil, that we ask protection from Allah, 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 Allah,